Welcome back to Behind the Glass. In this episode, we'll focus on a key feature found in our boats 26 feet and above, the dual side entry doors. We'll dive into the design considerations and manufacturing steps involved in creating a seamless door and frame. Stick around as we take you behind the glass. Designing a new boat involves many decisions that impact the final product. It is the design team's responsibility to find the best solutions. For our side doors, design considerations were made early in the process to ensure a seamless integration and functionality. For our side doors, design considerations were made early in the process to ensure a seamless integration and functionality. There are two key factors in designing a side door into the hull. The first is the hull mold itself. For a boat designed to include a side door, the hull mold must have special provisions to accommodate the extra framing that the door requires. Unlike our smaller boats, which have smooth, uninterrupted hull sides, a side door needs a secondary removable mold. This is one area where sports and boats stands out. While other brands often use a shiny stainless frame around their doors to cover the seams, we take a different approach by finishing all of our doors in fiberglass. As a result, when you look down the side of a sportsman boat, you'll see a smooth, continuous, and beautifully crafted hull. The second key factor is the stringer system and its support. As you can imagine, cutting doors into the side of a boat requires precise engineering and additional reinforcements to ensure proper bracing around the opening. This is where the stringer system plays a vital role in the side door's design. Think of the stringer system as the boat's spine, providing the necessary support to distribute energy and forces while on the water. In our design, the stringer and hull sides around the door are locked together, creating a strong integrated support system for the door opening. Additionally, the secondary mold for the door frame wraps the colored gel coat surface, resulting in a more aesthetically finished piece. This also adds extra structural integrity based on the I-beam principle, enhancing both strength and durability. Now that you understand the design and principles behind the door frame, let's take a closer look at the actual fabrication of the hull. The process begins with the secondary molds. The secondary mold is then secured with a designated clamp on the backside of the primary mold. This holds the secondary mold in place throughout the lamination process. Although there are very tight tolerances where the two molds meet, a small wax strip is applied around the edge to create a rounded finish. This step plays a pivotal role later in the post-production phase, minimizing rework. Gel coat is carefully hand applied around the door area to ensure an even coating. At this point, the entire hull side and bottom are sprayed with the matching color gel coat that was previously applied around the door area. As we've seen in previous episodes, the next steps involve applying the skin coat layer and bulk layers. The skin coat layer is applied around the door frame with all excess resin carefully rolled out. This step is critical in minimizing rework after the hull is removed from the mold. Once the skin coat is complete, work begins with the bulk layer. This is where precisely CNC cut fiberglass pieces are carefully applied to the edges around the door mold, followed by the application of resin. This step adds the necessary strength to the door frame. Notice how the team pays close attention to both doors at every step ensuring that each layer blends together and flows seamlessly. This is where the expertise of our highly experienced members truly shines. At the same time the hull is being laminated, the deck is also being built. Unlike the hull sides, the deck is less visible and only requires additional flanges. Looking at an empty mold, you can clearly see where the door will be placed later in the process. 
the extra flanging in this area meets the outer side of the hall door frame, creating a very small seam on the inside of the finished door. This section is laminated as part of the entire deck mold and is carefully trimmed later in the process. This is yet another crucial step that contributes to the final polished appearance of the boat. We can now shift our focus to the manufacturing of the door itself. The door is produced using our LiDAR TM or resin transfer molding process, which you've seen in previous episodes. This process utilizes two molds that are clamped together under a vacuum to produce a part with a gel coated surface on both sides. In the small parts department, both the A and B mold start their cycle at the mold maintenance department. Here, the team inspects the molds and polishes out any imperfections. Once satisfied, the molds are moved into the gel coat booth. The A side of the mold is sprayed with a matching gel coat color. This side will be visible from the hull, so it must be perfectly matched to the boat's exterior color. The B side of the mold is always sprayed white as it matches the interior color of the deck. The team dry loads the precisely cut fiberglass one layer at a time. All the fiberglass used here is CNC cut for maximum precision. These machines make quick work of what was once a tedious hand cutting job. The fit and accuracy of these layers are crucial in light RTM as the two molds must fit together perfectly with an airtight seal. If even one layer of fiberglass is out of place, it can prevent the mold from sealing properly, causing resin to leak out during the process. There is one small difference in the process for making doors, and that involves how we fill the interior area. The door ends up being quite thick, and filling it entirely with fiberglass would make it unnecessarily heavy. Earlier in the process, the team used a separate set of molds to create a foam block. This secondary door mold is shaped exactly like the cavity inside the doors, and the resulting foam block is what is used to fill the space. The process begins by clamping two molds together. Unlike other lamination processes in the plant, no gel coat is needed here because the finished part will never be visible. Once the molds are secured, the team fills the cavity with expanding foam, which expands into every corner of the mold, creating the perfect filler piece for our light RTM door. After the foam is solidified, the molds are separated, revealing the foam block that will fit perfectly inside the door's cavity. Let's jump back into the light RTM process where the molds are ready for the foam block insert. At this stage, you can clearly see the molds prepared to accept the foam block, which will fill the entire cavity. A team member carefully lowers the block into place, ensuring that the layers of dry fiberglass stay perfectly aligned. At this point, they clean off the flange that seals the two halves of the mold, preparing them to be clamped together using vacuum force. The B mold is then raised into place and lowered using the locator pins to ensure perfect alignment and the vacuum hoses are attached. This vacuum creates 10,000 pounds of clamping force per square inch on the part, holding everything securely as resin flows through the hoses. The extreme vacuum pressure saturates the dry fiberglass with resin while maintaining the door's final shape. The door remains in the mold until the resin fully cures. Once curing is complete, the vacuum ports are removed, the mold is opened, and the finished door is revealed inside. The door is now ready to move to the next area in the plant for final polishing and assembly. In this section, the door is finished. While there are a few key areas that require attention, the primary focus is on the seam created by the two halves of the mold. A team member gets to work sanding and smoothing the seam before applying gel coat to that area. Once the gel coat is applied, the door is sanded again and the entire surface is buffed to a high gloss finish. After a final inspection, the door is moved to the final assembly area where it will be installed on the boat. 
The process of installing a door on a boat takes place at the very end of assembly. Let's jump to that stage now to see how a set of doors is installed. During the deck rigging process, the large hinge that supports the door has already been installed and through bolted. At this point, the team begins fitting the door, ensuring a uniform gap on the outside and a smooth transition as the door opens and closes. Once everything is properly aligned, they drill pilot holes, followed by securing the door to the hinge with high-quality alachrome screws. They will then check the door swing to ensure that there is no rubbing or interference, marking the completion of the door assembly. The process of designing and manufacturing doors for our boats has evolved significantly over the years. The precision that we achieve with minimal rework is impressive and a huge testament to the skill of our manufacturing team here at Sportsman. As with many other processes, these are continually improving as we strive to lead in innovation and quality. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Behind the Glass. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest episodes and other content from Sportsman Boats. Thanks for watching.